Okay, let's get this show on the road. Hello, everyone. Hope you're well. Welcome to another edition of Math 1108. Let's actually uh, hmm, jump into it. Okay, looking good. Looks like the Houston we have left off. Someone else coming in too. All right, so um, gave you your test results earlier this week. Uh, I have had people reach out to me for office hours, which is totally fine, but I don't think I replied to everybody um, because there were some students with uh, bigger issues that I had to deal with first, um, but I will get around to that. So I'm all for meeting with you guys during office hours this week. Um, but if I haven't responded yet, just give me another uh, day or so, and we'll have that set up. Um, that being said, Today, I just wanted to uh, mess with you guys a little bit um, and sort of motivate what we will be covering pretty soon, which is um, a topic called counting, um, or I, it, it can be called basic combinatorics, I think, is the, the right word for it, because it's not just counting, like one, two, three, it's like, it's like counting, like sophisticatedly, you know, like uh, in, in, in ways that is, are important. So um, to motivate that, uh, I wanted to just talk about some probability problems with you guys. So I know I haven't taught you guys how to do probability, so I'm expecting most of you to get these wrong anyway, but it's just a fun thing, so just guess, um, try to use your best intuition. Um, every now and then students get a, a few of them right, so uh, especially if uh, anyone had um, experience in science classes and they took like, you know, a biology class where they had to do gen genetics and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, uh, just want to do some probability teasers, some kind of problems that I will uh, be asking you guys to solve and just see how we do in the first place. That being said, just to make it a little bit fair, give you guys a, a fighting chance here. Um, I can talk a little bit about, you know, just essentially what, what, what is probability? What, what probability is maybe, but first, uh, don't want that in blue. Okay, so just uh, let's just try to do some sort of intuitive definition. You know, I'll give you guys the real definition that we'll be using later on. But uh, so far, what do you guys think? Like when you hear a probability, someone says, oh, the probability of this happening is blah. Like, what are they saying? What do you guys think? Like you guys have heard that word before. Is oh. it like chances? Like chances? the chance of this happening is this amount or this percent at least? Okay, so so it's a percentage of something. Like how how is that computed? How do you get that number? The likelihood of an event happening. Yeah, but when you say likelihood, what is the calculation that you would do? If we if we had to bring it down to to the math world, and I give you a number, I say the probability is this number. Where did that number come from? I can't, I can't just say, it's the likelihood. <laughs> like, like someone who doesn't know, you just be like, uh, just telling them words. Like, what does that mean? Maybe division, like, uh, or I think of a fraction. So you yeah. use division in order to get that. Yeah, what do you divide by what? Is it um, like a certain um, like situation out of so many outcomes? Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, so we're, we're getting to that, right? So now, when you think of mathematical definitions, this is the level you wanna get at. Uh, you don't just wanna be like, well, it's, it's the chances or the likelihood. You have to say specifically what that means. What is the calculation? What is the equation? What are we doing? And you guys are, are getting to it. It's some sort of division where you're talking about, you know, some situation out of how many outcomes. And, and that's, that's, that's a pretty good definition to start with. So let's say here, suppose, a is an event, and I'll actually define what event is for you uh, as well. 
Um, but just this is just some situation or occurrence that we're looking at, right? So is A is an event. The probability of A, uh, which we call P of A, it's sort of like the, the notation is like a power series, but the P isn't like super fancy. It's just like a regular P is given by right, probability of A is the number of ways that A can occur divided by the total number of possible occurrences, right? And then this is this is all you know within some you know predefined context. So think of all the things that could happen, and then think of how many of those ways does this particular thing that I'm looking for to happen? How many of those ways can this thing happen? And then when you count those numbers and you take the first, the, the last number I mentioned divided by the first one, that thing gives you a probability. So example, if I say uh, I toss a fair coin, what is the probability it shows up heads, right? Um, what would I do? Well, I would say, well, the total possibilities well, that is, well, it can be heads H or tails, right, which is T. So, uh, so this means the total number of possibilities is two. There are two total, in this context, when I'm talking about flipping a coin, in this predetermined context, there are two possibilities. Now, of course, if, if A is the event, it shows heads. Then this is just one possibility of all the possible possibilities. So therefore, I would be able to say the probability of A here is going to be one divided by two. And I can say that's a half, or I can say uh, 50%. There's a 50% chance, right? And what that means is I counted all the possible, the number of possible things that could happen. And then I counted the number of ways that the specific event that I care about can happen. And I divide these two numbers. This gives us what we call a probability. So it's kind of like a, a, a measure of relative frequency. So probability for us is a measure of relative frequency. So that, that's what a probability is, okay? So now that you guys are equipped with the definition, let's actually just jump into some problems. Now, the first problem is actually super, it's a super famous problem, uh, probably goes back to the 1950s, um, but this version of the problem, I took it from a magazine that was back in 1975. So um, you guys might not know this, uh, what humans did before we had TikTok and Facebook and all that, uh, they would read print media, and every now and then you'll have a column in there that will be about math and science. They'd read about it and then they discuss that with their friends at work. 
And this one was really like, people were really into this particular thing because the answer that was printed the week pr after this came out, because, you know, it's like a puzzle. They print it in, in one week and then they print the answer the next week. And during that week, people are supposed to like figure it out and, you know, talk about it. And then they see the answer. And this one actually surprised a lot of people. So it's called the Monty Hall problem. It's actually a very famous problem. So a lot of you probably know it. Um, and if you do, I probably want you to stay silent and just to make this a little fun, the people who haven't really seen this or talked about it um, can actually take a guess. But Montreal was a game show host. And so this problem is kind of written in, in that kind of thing. Like you're on a game show, you're playing a game. There are three doors, door one, door two, door three. Um, we'll get to the equivalent problems later. But just to show you the situation, you're, you're on a game show and there are three doors. This is, this is you. And this is like a, you know, stage. Here's Monty Hall, game show host by day. Okay. And on this stage, there are three doors. One, two, three, right? Now, you get to pick a door and you win whatever prize is behind the door. That, that, that's the game show, right? You, you, you win whatever is behind the door. So behind these doors, there are prizes. Now, behind one door is a car, right? Oh, well, I, I'm not gonna write that, I already typed that out. Right, so it's typed up here. Behind one door is a car, right? Which is the prize you want. Behind the other two doors is some lesser prize. Traditionally, it's goats, like literally goats. Like the animals, not the greatest of all times, right? So two doors have goats behind them. One door has a brand new car, right? Obviously you want the car, unless I don't, I don't know. Maybe you want a goat, I don't know. Most people would want the car, right? So you pick a door and you say, I pick door number one. I pick door number one, Monty. And so, oh, Monty says, you want the prize behind door number one. I, I like door number one. I'm, I'm always, my, my father always told me to be number one, be the best. Yeah, I want door number one. So Monty Hall is like, okay, I see you, all right. Um, but he goes over and he opens, say, some other door. Door number three, right? So here's door number one. Here's door number two. Monty opens door number three and look, meh, right? He goes, hey, I know you want door number one, but Boom, he opens door number three, and now he tries to psych you out. He's like, yo, dude, look here. There's a goat, man. What if there's a goat behind the door you picked, right? And so now he's like, I'm on your side, man. I want you to win this car. But I'm seeing right here there's a goat, and I'm worried for you, bro. So I'm going to give you a chance to change your answer. Do you want to change your answer? Or maybe I should ask it this way. Should you change your answer? What do you guys think? So this is a, something of probability. Probability comes in when there is uncertainty and um, you want to kind of think, what are the chances of me actually winning the car and then make a decision based on that? So under this situation, you pick door number one. He shows you door number three. There's a goat. He starts freaking you out. You hear the goat bah, bleeding away. And you're like, man, he's, he's right. What if, what if I did pick a goat? And then now you start to get into your head, get exactly what he wanted to do, right? Do you change your answer? Should you change your answer? Does it matter? Like maybe it's just a psychological trick. What do you guys think? You should change? 
I think I saw a movie about this, but I think <laughs> this just wasn't a movie. It was actually a, a very uh, well. I like the movie. This wasn't a movie in like uh, 2008, I think. Yeah, it's actually yeah. a pretty good movie. Uh, it's I called think... 21. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. About the, yeah. they steal all that money. <laughs> yeah, they stole all the money from those casinos. Yeah. Is there anyone who did did not do, does not know where this is from who wants to think should the should you switch your answer or not? Maybe maybe it would be interesting if I can take a vote. You guys can click like yes in uh, in the chat thing if you would change your vote. If you would like, you know what? I'm gonna switch to door number two because that kind of psyched me out. Um, you know, and, 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 and some people might be like, no, he's just trying to trick you. He just opened a door just to freak you out. Like you probably had the car and he's trying to like trick you into picking the other one. <laughs> so he doesn't like, it's not going to change. It's not like the, the prizes behind the doors can change. Like if you had the car first, you still have it now. Like, why would you change? Because this guy's trying to psych you out, you know? Um, don't be soft, bro. Okay. I don't know. So four people voted. So the answer is, yes. Yes, you should switch. You are actually twice as likely to win the car if you switch your answer. Um, if you stick with door number one, your chances of winning, your probability of winning is one out of three. If you switch, it's two out of three. So yes is the answer. Okay, moving on. Wait, 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 why is that the answer? Like, that's not, this is a teaser. This is like a trailer to the movie. Like, I'm not going to reveal all the answers right now. Um, these are two problems that are actually equivalent to the Monty Hall problem. They have the same answer, the same type of answer for the same type of reason. Um, so it's also a very famous problem, the three prisoners problem. You have prisoners A, B, and C. Uh, they're sentenced to death. The governor decides to, you know, I'm going to pardon one of these guys at random because, um, you know, we want to save on electricity or whatever. We can't be electrocuting three people in the electric chair on one day. So he's like, you know what, one of them is going to be a pardon. But uh, we're going to tell them because we don't want, you know, anything to happen or, you know, people like, oh, the governor chose him, let's do retaliate or whatever. Right. So prisoner A begs the, the, the warden to be like, please just tell me who's going to be executed so I can sleep a little sound tonight. And then, you know, uh, he goes to the warden and he's the warden's like, you know what, I can't really say, you, you know, like if, 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 if it's going to be you or some other guy, but you know what? I've always liked it. You always been a, you always behaved well. So I'll tell you what. Um, I can tell you, prisoner B is gonna die or something like that, right? So he doesn't tell him about his own fate. He tells him about one of the other guys who are gonna die, and then he's like, "All right, okay." So this is prisoner A who went to the guard. And he knows now prisoner B is going to die. So now he's like, Phew, "I can I can rest a little easier now because." Before my chances of dying were one, my chances of being the one that lives is one in three, um, because if that's how probabilities were, there were three possibilities, only one of them would live. So the probability of one of them living at random is one in three. So it's like, okay, my chances just went from one in three to one in two, because I already know that this guy's gonna die. So he's happy, he goes to prisoner C and is like, hey man, I think you and I can rest a little easier because I was told that B is the one who's gonna die. So, you know, it's just a 50-50 between you and me. Now, prisoner C, he doesn't really want to say to prisoner A what he's thinking because he doesn't want to freak him out. But he's like, prisoner C is like, yeah, I feel like your chances didn't change though, but my chances just doubled. And the riddle is, who is right? Do they have a 50-50 chance or did prisoner C double his chances? And the answer is prisoner C doubled his chances. It turns out that the chances of the first guy winning didn't change in the in the in the same way um, that this didn't change right so it's like before here when there was three doors in the beginning 
we thought of it as a one in three chance, but when one door was removed, a lot of people intuitively think that now there's a 50-50 chance, which is just, it's actually not true that it's a 50-50 chance. And, and it turns out that he still has a one third chance on, on this door, but it's like before you had one third, one third, one third, once this guy was eliminated, what actually happened is the one third jumped from this door to that door, right? And it jumped to that door specifically. So in the same way in the three prisoners problem, it's not like once you know one prisoner is going to die, that now it's a 50-50 chance between the other two. It turns out that one of those prisoners got the extra one third chance. And I know it's, it's, it's probably weird to some of you uh, that that would be true, but mathematically, this is true. You can actually write this out and you can prove this to yourself that this is going to be true. Um, Another one is uh, suppose you have three boxes. One box has two gold coins, and one has two silver coins, and one has two one of each, right? So there's a box with two gold coins. There's a box with two silver coins. There's a box with one gold coin and one silver coin. And you pick a box at random. You pick one of these boxes. You, they're closed. You don't know which one has which. And you pick up and you close your eyes and you pick out a coin at random from that box. And uh, the coin you pick is the gold one. And the pro and the the question is, what is the probability or the chances that the box you pick was the one with the two gold coins as opposed to one or the other? And because you know that there are two boxes with gold and only one with all silver, you might think, oh, there's a 50-50 chance that the box I picked was the one with the with two golds. And it turns out that's actually wrong. Um, yeah. It's again, it's a, it's a one third, two third split as opposed to a 50 50 split. Um, but all of these three problems here, the first three have a very similar solution. Um, so yeah, if, I, if you know how to solve one of them, you'll know how to solve all of them. So let's actually move on to uh, a different type of problem, which is fun in its own way. Okay, so here's, uh, here's what we're gonna do. Let's say you know a couple has two children, that's all you know. And now I ask you uh, some questions. Uh, the questions are, what is the probability that both children are girls, right? So I ask you, okay, there's a couple out there somewhere in this neighborhood, they have two children. What would you, if you were a betting man, what would you say the chances are that uh, they're both girls? 25%. 25%. I agree, 25%. So A, 25%, it's one in four. You guys are good at this. All right, all right, let's, let's change up the situation. There's a couple out there with two children and I tell you, you know what? One of them is a girl. What is the probability that the other one is a girl? What is it now? 50%. 50. That makes a lot of sense, right? Because the other one can only be a boy or a girl, right? We're just assuming that there, there are two sexes for the purpose of this, right? For a math poem, right? So yeah, if I know one is a girl, then the other one can either be a boy or a girl. And we're assuming relatively that it's a 50-50 chance, which it's interesting, but it, it's actually true that it's a 50-50 chance. Um, however, uh, girls are a little bit more prevalent than boys in general on the planet. And it's not because that one, they have a higher probability of being born. It's more like they have a higher survival rate or something like that. But yeah, it's, it's, you'd assume it's a roughly 50-50 chance. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's also wrong. Uh, it turns out that there's a one-third chance that the other one is a girl. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Okay, wait, go wait, back. Wait, wait, wait. Explain how you got one Okay, there. so 
a couple has two children, right? Now, part C, I tell you, the older girl is a girl named Freuda. Freuda. Right? Her name is Freuda. What are the chances now that the other one is a girl? What do you think? Isn't it just also one third? Yeah, I think. Yeah, well, if the answer to B was a third, then the, the answer to this thing. one would yeah. also be a third. Yeah, okay. I know one's a girl. You tell me her name is Freuda. Okay, like what is it? You know, it's different. It's a half now. Probably is a half. That's just beautiful. Yeah, I know. It's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, okay. B. What if you know one of them is a girl born on a Monday? Now I tell you, she's born on Monday. What are the chances that the other one is a girl in this situation? Now this, this one is kind of hard if you start thinking about it in the correct way. So let me just say this. What do you think the denominator is gonna be? <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, from the of uh, a girl born. Yeah, so what would the denominator? What are all the possible scenarios for a girl and boy and, and like how many total possibilities are there gonna be? Seven? I still think it's gonna be seven. Like uh, the possibility is just gonna be out of the days. But remember, you, you wanna know the sex of the other child, right? So it's like seven there are seven possible days for that other, that child to be born on, but then you have to worry about is it boy or a girl, right? So I mean, 14, you know, for each day, you could choose a boy or a girl. You know, 14 would probably also make sense. Um, turns out, the, based on what? The days don't matter. All the question is asking is for, for the, the sex of the other kid. It, yeah. So, so what? So what are you? What are you saying? What are you saying now? I think it's one half or fifty percent. Yeah. Okay. That 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 actually makes a lot. Of, that's very reasonable, Peter. It's also wrong. Um, <sighs> it's it's uh it's thirteen over twenty seven. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> the point of me going through this exercise with you guys isn't just to mess with you. Okay. Like. 40% of the reason is for me to mess with you. But the 60% of the reason is to show you that probabilities can be tricky. And at the end of the day, what makes it tricky are two main things. And those things are, you know, counting is one of them, which is why we're going to need counting. We're going to need to know, how do I count all possibilities in the situation I'm currently in? It turns out in part A, there were four po total possibilities. In part B, there were three. In part C, there were two. In part D, there were 27. Now, these guys all look like a very similar situation, but they were all very different situations. The information I gave you changed the context in which we were in without, without most people realizing it. Um, so yeah, these are all different answers, even though many people who are very new to probably would think that all the answers were the same, They'd also probably think that most of the time the answer was a half. The answer was a half like one of the times, right? Um, and so if someone just randomly guessed on a test, like a half, a half, a half, a half, they would actually get 25% on this test, right? Um, yeah. Moving on. You have four playing cards. Two are black and two are red, right? So you know two of these cards are black. You know two of them are red. You shuffle them, right? You pick two at random. You just close your eyes. You pick two, you know, pick a card, pick two cards. What is the probability that both cards are the same color?
and how, how, uh, what are the chances that you picked two cards of the same color? You either pick two reds or you pick two blacks. What do you think? Just go on, give me, give me a guess. Like, I don't expect you guys to really know the answer. I just wanna see where your intuition is telling you. Cause I haven't taught you how to do probability yet. So it's, it's totally cool if you're, if you're wrong here. Maybe 6%. Six? Yeah. Six percent? Like six out of a hundred? Yeah. That's interesting. Why why would you say that? Because I don't know, I multiplied a quarter times a quarter and um Oh okay. One sixteen. So you're thinking okay, so there's one over sixteen is your six percent. So you're thinking yeah. of okay one out of four i get like a black and then there's another one out of four that is also the black yeah i mean why wouldn't you do like a like a one out of four and then there were three remaining so there's like a one out of three for the other black like why wouldn't you do it that way so it's like one twelfth instead i don't know maybe because they both have to be because you're, you're picking two at a time yeah yeah, so, I mean, anyone else think that that's what it's going to be, one out of four? I mean, it sounds right because it doesn't say that it was placed back into the deck. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, the answer is a third. All right, moving on. <laughs> I love seeing Peter's face when I see <laughs> It's a third. It's a third. I'm not. I'm not lying. I'm not. I'm not lying to you guys. Like when I tell you the answer, I'm not messing with you. I'm, I'm messing with you when I ask you what the answers are. But the answer is a third. It's one out of three chance that you'll pick two cards of the same color. All right. Let's do something similar. Let's go from four playing cards to four coins. Throw four coins in in like a a box or something. You shake them up. You throw them out on the table. What is probably that two of those cards are heads? This is very similar to the other problem. Um, it's, uh, it's like having the four coins is kind of like having the four cards and there are two things like heads and tails, like there's red and black for the cards. And now I just want to know that two of those coins behave the same way, like they're both heads. So maybe it's also a third. Right, like uh, it's going to be like a third because, well, because it's it's kind of similar to the last question. Like, wouldn't wouldn't you say or or no or am I wrong or, or is that totally like I, am I totally like off my rockers right now? Well, what what do you guys think? Well, like, what are the chances that if I threw out all the four coins that two of them specifically land up heads? Which also means that the other two go tails, but like we're focusing on the two heads, right? What do you guys think? A half? I Maybe mean, it's a half, because like there's a half a chance of getting a heads or a tails. And then out of four things, I want to look for half of them getting heads. So maybe it's a quarter. Maybe maybe it's a half times a half. Like there's a a half a chance that two of them come up the same. And then there's another half of that, which I can multiply, which is when two of them show up heads specifically. Or maybe I have to multiply half by each coin, right? So like a, it's a half times a half, times, like one eighth. What I mean, do you guess guys say? 31%. 31%, I love his numbers. Like when he says like 6% to the last one, I'm like, that, I've never heard an answer like that. That was so like, inch, like, like 6%, like he doesn't even give me the fraction. He like gives me the percentage and like, wow. Like, yeah, 6, 6%, 31%. Uh, I don't know. Is it 31%? One out of 16. One out of 16, very reasonable answer. Very reasonable. Is it, a, I, I never calculated the percentage, so I don't know. 
it's like 31%. No, it's not 31. If we, if we go by percentage, it's uh, 37.5. So how about that? Uh, but I'll, I'll be a little bit nice. I'll tell you it's, it's three out of eight. Three out of eight is the answer here. Okay, moving on. Now, this is also a famous problem, and I'm going to actually teach you how to solve this problem as well in like two different ways. It's known as the birthday problem. How many people do you need to have in a room for it to be likely? And by that, likely means over 50% chance. That two people will have the same birthday. Right. So like birth birthday, you know, like uh, January 17th or whatever. Right. So I get a bunch of people in a room and I ask them for when their birthdays are. And I want to know how can I guarantee or not guarantee guarantee is a bad word. Uh, how many people do I have to have in that room so that I'm confident. Over 50 percent confident that two people in this room have the same birthday now. Like how many people do you think that would that would that would take? And and let, let's not even count like leap years or whatever. Just think that there are 365 days in a year. Like how many people would I need to know that you know what at least two people you know the minimum amount of people for me to have to guess that eh, it's actually more likely than not that two people have the same birthday. 730 730, yeah, Make, makes a lot of sense. The answer is 23, 23 people, right? And I, I've actually done this in, in classes where I, I don't have 23 people in this class, but I've actually done this in classes whenever I have more than 23 people and we just go around and say, everyone says their birthday. And yeah, most of the time we actually find two people with the same birthday. Because normally in a class like this, I have about 25 when it's in-person classes, but you know, uh, 2020 happened and now class sizes are a lot smaller. Okay, so this one, I'm not actually going to teach you how to do. Um, it was just, it was just, a, it was a teaser for the sake of teasing. You know, like how when you had that Infinity War trailer and you saw Hulk charging in into battle, and you actually saw the movie and you're like, well, that was a lie. Like you didn't hear, right? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is a total fake out. Um, a certain intersection, every minute, an average of 25 cars pass through this intersection. Um, so you're standing there and you, you count on average 25 cars pass through this intersection every minute. And so now someone says, okay, start your stopwatch right now. In the next minute, what is the probability that 25 cars are gonna pass in this next minute right now? Right? And you're like, well, I've been standing here for like a week, nothing to do with my time. I've been measuring on average how many cars pass through this intersection. It works out to 25 cars per minute. Um, so, I mean, what, 90% chance that 25 cars are gonna come by in the next, this particular minute that we're looking at right now? Turns out it's 9%. And yeah, that's something I'm not going to show you guys how to do. That kind of problem actually requires calculus. You can actually use calculus in probabilities, but uh, it is not assumed that you guys know calculus here. So yeah, we're not going to do that. Here's another one. Two bankers, I don't know why they have to be bankers, but they arrive on a platform at a train station at random times between 5 and 6 p.m., right? So they leave work, they both go through the same train station and part their ways to go home. But it turns out you know for a fact that these two bankers, they get to the train station between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. every day. They stand on the same platform, you know, or, or maybe it's like, you know, two people who were setting it up. It's another movie, maybe a rom-com. And you know that these two people are meant for each other because the movie talks about this girl right here and all the things that she's going on in her life, what she wants out of life and all that stuff. And then the movie focuses on this guy right here. And you know about what he wants out of life and the kind of girl he's looking for. And you're like, 
wow, they come by the same train station every day. And then you're like, will they ever meet each other? And everyone's like on the edge of their seats, kind of thinking like, what, what are the chances that these two are going to meet each other? And they're going to, you know, they're going to realize you were what, you're my soulmate. You were meant to be together, right? But they come to this train station every day between five and six for five minutes at a time before they catch their train to their next destination. What are the chances that they actually meet on that platform and we actually get a movie? One out of 12. One out of 12. Very interesting guess. That's, that's very interesting. It's, uh, it's 23 out of 144, though. Yeah. So 23 out of 144 times, the movie doesn't happen. Like, they, they never actually meet. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I guess, guess there's no movie now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's weird. Even when you're trying to like imagine a situation where soulmates happen, it's unlike. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's, uh, that's some probability teasers for you. Uh, some of them you guys got, which is, uh, which is great. Um, there, are, there are times when I have classes where they literally get everything wrong. Um, so you guys got a few. That's actually a pretty good. Um, but yeah, like, Look at this one, like what, what's going on there? Um, so I don't want to actually start anything else. So maybe let's talk about what we've seen so far and try to make sense of some of these. Um, let's go back to the, back to the two children's problem. Let's actually figure out what that, that is about. Um, so a uh, couple has two children. Chances are uh, an A, probability both girls. Why was it one fourth? What, what were the, what were all the possibilities? Right, let's say B is boy, G is girl. Tell me, uh, how do you conceptualize all possibilities? One half times one half. No, like how did you set it up? Like why, did, why is it one half times one half? We didn't even get there. Oh. Like if, if, if I wanted to go by the definition that I, I introduced earlier, that the probability is going to be the total ways that something can happen divided by the total number of possibilities, right? Like what, what is all possibilities? How would you describe them here? How would we count them? So there's two possibilities for the first one to be either boy or girl. Mm -hmm. and then the second child, there's two possibilities for it to be a boy or a girl. So if we're trying to get both girls, it's going to be one out of two and then one out of two. So you multiply. Yeah, but wh two. why did you multiply them? Do you always multiply probabilities? No. Why did multiplication even come up? Why, why, why didn't you add them or, or divide them or, or do something else like that? I don't know if you add them, then it'll become like a whole, and we don't want that. Like one. I mean, one is a poss one is a possible probability. Um, a probability is a number between zero and one, so you can get a whole number answer. Zero and one are possible answers. But I, I, I want kind of a pictorial way because I, I don't want you to be reasoning in your head like like what you guys are doing. Because if you do that, that's when you get in trouble, right? Because then when you start wondering about these other things, like how are you going to explain the third? Right? Like how do you explain the one third in, 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 in your scenario? Right? Because it's still it, like the explanation that you're giving, well, there's a one out of two chance and there's a one out of two chance and you multiply them. Like where would the third come from in that case? Right? So it's kind of dangerous to do what you're doing, which is what I'm trying to get at. Give me a, like a diagrammatic way of all possibilities. Can we think of it as sets of children? Can, we, can I think of it as in sets, like there's a boy and a girl? Would that make sense?
it would not make sense to think of their children as sets. Why not? Is it because we use subtraction in sets and we're trying to get rid of? No, there's a more elementary reason. What, what is something that we know about sets? They're unordered and they don't care about repeats, right? Which means if someone had say two boys, then now it's like, that's what we have, right? We lose some information and we won't be able to actually make a proper count. So a set is not what you'd want to conceptualize these children as. You probably want tuples. Now, what are the possible tuples? Well, you can have a boy and a boy. You can have a boy and a girl. You can have a girl and a boy, or you can have a girl and a girl, right? Where the, the first coordinate is the, let's say the oldest and the youngest, right? What you notice now is that here, four total possibilities. Right? Now, what are we looking for to happen? Two girls, right? How many possibilities have that? Only one, one possibility has two girls. So this means in this scenario, the probability of two girls is one out of four. There are four total chances, ways that they could have two children. Only one of those ways was what I wanted. Now let's move to B. We are told one is a girl. What is the probability of two girls if we know one is a girl? Right, which is not the same as this probably, right? This is the this is the probably of two girls. This is the probably of two girls if we know one is a girl. What does that mean? Well, it means that if I have boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, and girl, girl, now boy, boy, not a possibility anymore. We were told that they, they one is a girl for sure which means that's no longer a possibility, which means now there are three total possibilities. And again, one of those possibilities is what we want. So in this case, the probability is going to be one out of three, right? because I am going by the definition that probability is all the number of total possibilities in the denominator and the number of ways what I'm looking for to happen in the numerator. It's what, it has to be one out of three in this case because all possibilities now, there are only three all possibilities. Now in the third one, and I'll, I'll leave part D for you guys to think about and we'll talk about on Friday. In the third one, the, 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 the girl's name was a fake. It was to, to lead you astray. What was important is that we were told that if you read the question carefully, the problem was we were told about the older child. That was the main hint. So here we know the older child is a girl. So now, the total possibilities it has to be either a g and a g or a g and a b i cannot accept any possibility where there's a boy in the first position so these are gone and this is gone because here the older is a boy so now there are only two possibilities.
and one of them is what we want. So here, the probability is one out of two, right? So now when you start to go by the definition, the mathematical definition of probability, you start to, these numbers start to make sense. However, of course, you have to be, have a way of conceptualizing it so you, you can actually count something. Um, and so you don't just reason through your head, well, there's a one and a two and then you multiply and then you don't even know whether you should be multiplying or not if you don't even know what you're looking at. So one thing is to know how to count. The other thing for probability that's important is this kind of spatial awareness, spatial reasoning thing where you can know how to dissect the prob possibilities into some diagrammatic sort of way where you can kind of know what you should be counting in the first place. Then you need to know how to count them and then you can get to the answer. Once you're able to count the total possibilities and count the number of ways you want to, to get something, then you, you know the probability. You will never actually make the mistake. But those two things, figuring out how you want to view the situation and then figuring out how to count the things in such a situation in the worldview that you're using, that's what makes probability hard. And that's, those are the, strat I'm gonna give you strategies on how to do this. Uh, try D. Uh, next time we'll, we'll, we'll go over some of these. Try this. Where did that 27 come from? Start thinking about it. Um, but for now, uh, we will, we will end, we'll end there. Hopefully that was fun for you as it was fun for me. Um, but we'll stop there and I will uh, see you guys in the next one. Ciao.